Welcome to the Branson Woodwind Shop. This is the fourth video in the series on repairing this Wunderlich French horn and most of the work on this is going to be on tightening up the valves. If you have been following these videos, you know that last week I worked on the lathe and I ran into a problem. One of the screws on the lathe is very loose and it's causing the function of the lathe to be very sloppy. One of my viewers left a comment and he told me that I need an Acme nut for this. So I looked up an Acme nut. It is about $50 to $100 just for a nut that will fit this. Since I have the lathe, I am going to make a nut for it myself. The problem is that I am not sure how to use the threading mechanism. So, over the last week, I've been reading my lathe owner's manual, but it is taking me longer to do it than I thought it was going to. So I am not going to be working on the lathe or the valves this week. But that is okay because there is something else that needs to be done. There is a crack right on the rim of the bell, and it's pretty sharp. You could cut yourself on it. So I'm going to patch up that crack. There is another patch from here to here on the bell rim already, so I figured that it probably cracked there too, but the crack expanded up to here. Here's the patch that was already put on the bell. The patch goes around, oh, most of the way around the rim of the bell to right there. Here's the crack that needs to get patched, and if I pull on that, you can see that it is coming apart right there. This horn is over a hundred years old. It's been played a lot. So this has been resting on a lot of legs over the years and it has worn it down enough so that it cracked. A lot of professional level brass instruments have a steel wire that's inside of the bell rim. What they do at the factory is they start out with a piece of metal that does not have this rim in it. It is flat and it goes a little bit farther than this. And then they start to curl it up. And then they stop the lathe and then they put a steel wire in there. And then they curl it around the rest of the way. And then usually they will also add some solder along the bell rim too. To repair this crack, I want something that is curved like the bell is, and also that curves around. I could use a piece of flat sheet metal to do that, and then curve it, but it's a lot neater and easier if I have a piece of metal that's approximately the same shape to start with. And I do have something like that. It's an old trombone bell, or at least part of a trombone bell. And this is something I don't feel bad cutting apart because it already is uh, obviously not usable. I'm going to start by cleaning up some of the rough spots that stick out so that the metal patch will fit on there better. I'm going to start by marking how much I need to cut off on the bell. Let's see, about here to about here, and I am making it a little bit longer than it needs to be so that I can cut off a little if I need to. This tool is used to hold French horn bells. It has a piece of wood on the back. You can chuck that into a vise and you put the French horn bell in and then you can tighten it down. I adapted the tool for a trombone bell. Now I'm going to cut the patch out of the bell. You may be wondering why I did not use a French horn bell to fix this. Well, there are a couple reasons. One, because I did not have a French horn bell that was in bad enough shape to destroy. And also when I'm done, this will bend easily into place. So it should not be a problem at all fitting it onto a French horn. I'm going to turn off the camera, then finish cutting the patch, and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Now well, there is the patch. This one has a brass wire inside of it, and they also put some solder on there. So I'm going to need to melt the solder and then bend that back up so that it will fit around the rim of the French horn bell. So I'm going to melt the solder and try to open up that ring a little bit. Let's see. It is opening up a little bit. Uh, now I'm going to start prying it open with a screwdriver. Just going to open it up a little bit and then a little bit more until I can get that ring out of there. Okay, there it goes. Now with a little bit larger screwdriver, I'm going to melt the solder and pry that up, or at least try to pry it up along the way. This is proving a little bit more of a challenge to get apart than I thought it was going to. But that's the way it is with band instrument repair. You always think it's going to take a certain amount of time, and it almost always takes longer. So, 
that is normal. You just have to do what you need to do to get the job done, and if it takes a little bit longer, then, well, it takes a little bit longer. So what I'm trying to do now is unsolder that wire, and then just pull this out. Come on. It's coming out a tiny little bit, but not very much. The problem is getting it all up to temperature at the same time without overheating anything. Okay, let's see. Come on. Get out of there. It's not coming out. Oh, there we go. There it's coming out. I almost got it. Uh, there. I got it apart. So here is the brass wire that they put in there. And here is the patch. Now I'm going to finish opening up this part so that it can go around the bell rim on the French horn. There's several things I need to do now, but they all need to be done in the correct order. First of all, I'm going to buff off all of the solder that's on here, and I'm going to do that with the buffing wheel. And I have some Tripoli buffing compound that I'm going to use. I need to take off all the solder, and the reason I need to take off the solder is I'm going to heat this piece up to about 1200 degrees, and that will help soften it so that I can uh, mold it around the bell rim. If the solder is left on there though, then the heat will mess with the solder and it will cause cause problems later. So I'm going to buff all the solder off, heat it up to 1200 degrees to soften it, and then after that I'm going to be able to solder it onto the French horn. I have a foot switch on the floor to control the buffing wheel. So I'm putting the buffing compound on there. Now I'm going to buff off all of the solder. So that's what it looks like. You can see that most of the solder has come off. Um, I still need to buff in the cracks a little bit. The buffing wheel takes off stuff on the sides first, and it has a harder time getting into the cracks. So that's going to take a little more work, but it will come out. It will just take a few minutes. So I'm going to turn the camera off, and I'll show you what it looks like in a few minutes. I got all the solder cleaned up. Now I'm going to soften the metal so that I can bend it around the bell rim easier. And I'm going to do that by annealing it. And to anneal it, all you need to do is heat it up to around 1200 degrees. And a piece of metal this thin should uh, get heated up that hot very quickly. Okay, you can see how it's turning orange. That means it is up to 1250 degrees. Okay, I don't want to heat it up too much or then it will melt. Okay, that's, that's probably good. Now I'm going to wait for that to cool off and it will be soft enough to put on the bell. I'm ready to put the patch on. If there were lacquer on the bell, I would need to remove it, but the lacquer has been worn off over the years, so I do not need to do that. The patch does not quite line up. I'll turn this around so that you can see that. Since the patch came from a smaller bell, the radius is a little bit smaller than the French horn bell. That is okay though, because I softened the metal, it's very soft. See, that's about all I needed to do to get it to be the right shape. Okay, now the next thing I need to do is take the metal and roll it around the bell rim. I'm going to start doing that by hand. It's going to be hard to use a tool on it, at least now, until it's at least partially stuck onto there. So what I'm going to do is just get a little bit of this ready to go like that. You can see that it got bent around the bell rim a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's called tack solder. I'm going to, in one small place where it is touching the metal, put a little bit of solder. The solder will hold the patch on so that I can work with a tool to push down the metal. And as I go down there, I'm going to just go a little bit farther each time and keep soldering it till I get to the end. But I need to get started, so I'm going to do that with a little bit of tack solder. I have a solder clamp that I'm going to use to hold that on. Then I'm going to slide that right to where it needs to be. I'm going to solder it from the other side. So I'm going to turn that around so that I can get at it. And I'll turn the camera too so that you can see it. Now I'm going to put just a very small drop of solder on there. And this is flux. It helps the solder stick better. 
Okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to try to do this without it falling off of there, because right now it is not held on there very good. Also, I need to be careful not to unsolder the other patch that is on there. Okay. That is enough to... Whoa! Okay, the patch did fall off once, so I'm soldering it on again. The patch is tacked on very lightly on this side. I'm also going to tack it on the other side, too, so that it won't come out quite as easily. Okay, again, I am just putting a little bit of solder, just enough to hold it right now. Now it's tacked on both sides. Now I'm going to start working the metal around so that it sits flatly on the bell. I'm going to do most of my work with a flange burnisher, and this tool was made to take two flat pieces of metal and push them right up against each other. I'm going to do that with this tool. I'm going to take this metal and roll it around the rim, and I'm going to just do it a little at a time. When I get a portion of the metal that is flat against the bell, then I'm going to solder that portion and then move on to the next portion. So let's see what we have here. It looks like we're close. I'm going to try to take this and push that up closer to the bell rim. You can see how the metal is coming around the rim of the bell. And I'm going to do that just a little bit more. The tack solder that I put on there has come off. It did loosen up a bit, and that's okay though, because I have the other one still tack soldered on there. And I'm going to just go around the bell. Okay, that's probably enough. I think I'm going to stop there, solder this portion, and then keep moving on. Again, I'm going to heat that up and put some flux in there and then a little bit of solder. Oh, oh, a little too much solder. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is take the rag, heat that up again to melt the solder, and push that in until, it, until the solder hardens. Oops, not hardened yet. Come on. Is it hardened? Okay, the solder is hardened. I have tacked that on a little bit more. And you just keep doing that. You go up a little bit at a time. You want a very thin layer of solder. Because if you get a clump of solder underneath the patch, when you burnish the patch, it's going to leave a big bump on there. And you don't want that. So that is a very thin layer of solder underneath that. You see some solder mess here. I'm going to clean that up after I'm done. This will be a very messy solder joint, so I'm just resigning myself to the fact that it will be a mess and then I'm going to clean it up when it's done. The solder is not hard to clean up, so it will clean up very nicely. I'm not worried about the mess right now. What I'm trying to do now is get the metal as close as I can to the bell and then get that soldered into place and also get the metal as close as I can to the bell rim around to the other side and then solder it on into place there. I'm going to continue using the flange burnisher and I'm going to push the metal right up against the bell. Okay, and then when I do a section of that, I'm going to turn the bell around and I'm going to burnish the metal right up against the, uh, the bell rim. I want that metal as close to the edge as I can get it. That will make it look better. A good repair is an invisible repair. If you cannot tell that a repair was ever made to an instrument, that is the best way to do a repair. But of course that's usually not possible. But the closer you can get to an invisible repair, the better the job is, usually. If, of course, it still sounds good when you're done. Because the sound is usually more important than the looks. But of course they're both important. I have another little section that is burnished very close to the bell, so I'm going to put some solder on that. And about the pink stuff on the bell, 
Don't worry about that because that will come off when I clean up the solder. And again, I'm going to take a rag, warm that up and push on that. I'm going to just hold it there until it cools off and the, and the solder hardens. Okay, very good. Yes, that is good. So, that is what I have so far. And again, like I said, this is going to be a very ugly solder joint until I clean it up. But after I clean it, it should look good though. I'm just going to keep pushing the metal toward the other metal and keep soldering it until the job is done. And it's going to be done pretty much the same way I've done the rest of it. I'm done soldering and there is my rather ugly solder joint. I'm going to turn that around. So there's the other side from here to here. And there's a lot of solder clumps, everything all over the place, and a lot of pink metal. And I have to buff the metal to get the pink stuff off. I'm going to buff that by hand. I'm not going to use the buffer for this because the metal is so thin already. I do not want to thin that out anymore. So I'm going to buff it by hand. That should come off very easily. And then the clumps of solder, I'm going to heat those and then wipe them off with a cloth. Like there's a big clump there. The way I do that, I'm going to heat it up until I see it melt. And as soon as I see it melt, I'm going to take the flame off of it, wipe it with a rag to clean it up. And then it's going to have an extremely thin layer of solder. I do have to be very careful because if I heat up the ends too much, those might spring loose. And if I were to heat the whole thing up to temperature at the same time, it would just fall off and I would have to start over again. That would be really bad. So I'm going to be very careful. I'm going to heat up one spot, clean it up, and then wait for it to cool off, move on to another spot, and work my way down there. And I'm going to make sure everything cools off before I start the next spot. Another thing I need to do is neutralize the flux. I have a spray bottle and it's ammonia mixed with water. And that neutralizes the flux so that the flux stops acting. Because if the flux stays on there when I heat it up, the solder is just going to move around and stick to everything. But if I take the flux off of there, then the solder will come off easier. Now I'm ready to clean up the solder. I'm going to put some heat on there. And since this metal is so thin, it does not take very long to heat up to temperature. So that's why I'm working very quickly. Usually when I heat and wipe solder joints, it's not this difficult. On this one, it's going to take extreme care and control of the heat because you use too much heat and you have an extra job on your hands and I, I really don't want that. I've, I enjoy doing this but I don't want to do more than I need to do though. Okay this is the one that was really messy here and I have to be careful not to take off the other patch too. I just put a block of wood underneath the horn so that it will not roll as much. Um, okay. okay, now I'm going to pull that solder off of there by hand. Okay, it's making a little bit more of a mess. But it's okay though, it looks like a worse mess, but the solder is thinner, so because of that, it will be easier to buff off. What happens when I wipe the solder off is most of the solder comes off but it does leave a silverish color. That silverish color is extremely thin. That silver stuff is actually only a few atoms thick, so it buffs off very easily. So what you want to do is take off the clumps of solder, but the th really thin stuff, you don't need to worry about that because that buffs off very easily. Now I have to turn it around and clean up the other side. That should be easier though because there are only, a, you know, I'm going to say about three spots I need to clean up on that. Again, I'm going to be very careful not to use too much heat. There's one more spot. I need to be very careful with this because it is right at the end. Okay, that's good. To buff it, I'm going to put the wicking material in the little vise and then get some uh, of the Triple E buffing compound on that. I'm going to use this to buff the bell. I'm just going to take this and by hand I'm going to buff it and the pink stuff should come off fairly easily. Yeah, there it's, it's coming off. And this will take off as little as possible of the metal because it's already so thin. I don't want to make it thinner. 
I'm also buffing off the excess solder too. I'll see how hard it is to get that off. It might take a little more work to get that off. I may also need to use the buffing wheel on just a little bit of this. If, it's, uh, if it takes too long to take off by hand, I will take it off by buffing wheel. I'm going, to tr I'm going to try not to, but I might need to. I also need to keep in mind that this is a bare brass instrument, and it's going to get tarnished again anyway. So I'm going to make it look nice, but I also need to balance it with the fact that it's going to get tarnished again anyway. So I just am going to take off the pink stuff and the solder. And then that's about all I need to do on this one. I got most of the stuff off by hand, but I am going to have to go back to the buffing wheel and touch up a little bit on, on the bell rim. And also I did file down a little bit just where the patch is. The patch is really thick, so I don't need to worry about buffing that down. I just need to worry about the metal on the bell. I'm just going to buff where the patch is. I'm going to be very careful to avoid the bell as much as possible. I'm all done and here is the finished patch. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Please subscribe for more band instrument repair videos. And next week I hope to have my lathe fixed so that I can work on some valves.